Well, hello and welcome to Mucka's Corner. Today we are going to be playing with Play-Doh and different types of clays. I want to say a special hello to my grandchildren. So Scarlett and Jake and Max and Jane and Olivia and Theo. I look forward to having this time with you and um, I hope that you will enjoy learning about all the different types of things that you can make in clay and with Play-Doh and uh, salt dough. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is to uh, let you know about a recipe that you can make your own Play-Doh or salt dough. Um, it's the same thing. And the best recipe I have found is one cup of all-purpose flour and a half a cup of table salt and a half a cup of water. And you just mix it together in a bowl. You add the water kind of slowly um, because sometimes a half a cup of water may be a little bit too much or it may be not enough. So if you, when you are mixing, make sure that you just mix slowly. And if it looks like it's too wet to work with, then add a little bit more flour. And then if it's too dry, add just a little bit more water. And then uh, once you have it all mixed up, then you can divide it up into different um, uh, balls of, of uh, salt dough, and you can add food coloring to them. And usually it's about five or six drops, depending. You can go up to 10 drops if you want them really, really bright colors, okay? Um, I didn't mix any of that up today. I have something that's very similar to that. Excuse me, only because I did not have um, any food coloring. Couldn't find any food coloring in the stores right now. So um, if you have food coloring at home, then you can do that. You can also try, um, I put in the kits for, for the grandchildren, I put in the kits these um, uh, washable uh, tempera paints. And you can try putting a little bit of that in and see if that works. I haven't tried that yet, but I did read that that was a possibility. You can also uh, bake this type of clay and um, at 250 degrees for about two hours if you're using your oven. Now you can also microwave it um, and you do that in, in 10 second increments. So don't put it on for any longer than 10 seconds at a time and just keep checking it to see if it's dried out or not, okay? So I have a lot of things um, to show you today that we are going to uh, try to do and some things you can just try on your own and I'll just show you examples. But first off, I'm gonna start with um, this, this type of clay. This is the Play-Doh, right? And they come in, in containers like this and so um, you will need that today. And uh, you may want to get out too. I um, gave you a package, it's called uh, Natural Modeling Clay. That's very similar to what I use when I'm doing my pottery. So you might want to get some of that out. Um, you might want to get a small container of water. And you might want to get a small bowl and a piece of saran wrap to put inside, okay? Um, plastic is good if you have a plastic one, uh, but don't worry about it if uh, you can't find that. I also put in your kits um, these, these really pretty fancy uh, uh, sticks. Uh, we call them tongue depressors, but you can use them for all different kinds of things. We're gonna use those today. And then you can look for things that um, might help you with your building today. Like if you have a, a piece of wire, um, make and again, make sure you check with uh, mom and dad or something that you can use that you can make a hole with, maybe a pencil and, uh, or, and also you can get a pen Okay, um, if you have any stamps at home, you might want to uh, use those. So if you have like rubber stamps or clear stamps, you can do that. 
Um, if you have, let's see, what else can I tell you? You can use, um, if you have leaves out now, you can use real leaves and sticks and you can use them to make an impression. Um, I have a little, what is called a doily, a tata doily that we can use to make impressions with too. Um, so that's probably some of the things. And if you have, uh, for working with, you might need um, a knife and you can use a plastic knife if you have some. I just don't have any here right now. So you can use a regular knife and um, something that uh, you can draw with. So you can either use your pencil or your pen or you can get a plastic tool that has a, um, a dull point on it, but it does have a point. You also might want a fork. Okay, and I will try and remember to try all these things with you. So uh, make sure that you uh, check with uh, whomever is taking care of you that you can go and grab these things and get it all laid out. Um, the other thing that I need to remind you, of course, is um, you definitely need um, a covering on your table that your, or your work surface, wherever you're going to be working. And again, I'm using my, my plastic uh, garbage bag. You could also use a placemat um, for these types of clays. Uh, they work fairly nicely. I don't have any of my placemats here right now, so I'm going to use the lid of a plastic container and see how that works. Hopefully it is similar and it will work fine. Okay. So I think that's all the things. So you can go and gather up all these things. Make sure you check with your uh, caregiver first or your mom and dad and then wash your hands and then come back and we'll get started with some fun. Okay, so let's start first with your, your Play-Doh. So make sure you get your Play-Doh out in, in, from the containers, and that takes a while. So you can pause if you're having problems getting them out of the container. I know earlier today I had problems getting them out too. So there's lots of things that we can make with, um, with Play-Doh and salt dough. And so um, let's use the colored Play-Doh for now. And we're going to start with, you all know how to make snakes, I'm sure. Right, so I just took a chunk off and now I'm going to make a snake out of it. So you can either do it between your hands or rub it like this on, your, on the surface. Okay, nice and even. Remember, we don't squish down, we just roll it with our fingers. Okay, look at that, there's a nice, nice snake for me. Now I'm just going to what do you call round off. So you can you can tap on the end or just round it with your fingers so that it looks round. See that? Okay. And the other end too. So that's nice and round. Okay, and you can either just tap it or round it with your fingers, whichever you like. Then we're going to set that aside for a minute. Okay? And so we're going to take another color. So I'm going to take some blue and I'm just gonna take a big piece off like that. Roll it first. And this time when I'm rolling it, I'm gonna try to get it all even, right? I am teaching you a technique today that's called Mille Fiore. And uh, if you've ever been uh, to Venice, they have very special people who blow glass and they make very, very beautiful pieces by putting strips of colored glass together like we are going to do today um, to make lovely, lovely objects. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of what that can look like. Do you see these pieces that I've got on top of my pottery piece? This is a type of Mille Fiori that I did in clay. And so I'm going to show you how to do that. And um, we're also going to make some beads from it once we get that done. So just 
hold on, get that second piece rolled out. You make you could make it fairly long. Okay, and then go and get another color. Do the same thing. Work it up into a nice skinny snake or worm, whichever you like to call it. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more color. Our packages came with four colors, so that's kind of nice. One more time. Make this one nice and skinny too. So all your pieces, except for the very first piece that you started with, should be nice and skinny. Nice slim ones. Okay. All right, once you have all of them rolled out, then we're gonna start with the very first color. And this color is going to be our center. Mine was yellow, I don't know what color you chose. But then I am going to place from one of my more skinny ones right beside it. I'm gonna squeeze it a little bit, but not too hard. So they are together, can you see that? Side by side. Then. I'm going to place one of my other colors beside that. And push them together. So now I've got three colors. Can you see that? One, two, three colors together. And then I'm going to do my fourth color the other side of it. So we're going all the way around the yellow. And I have extra, so that's good. Hopefully you have some extra too. So I'm going to go back until I have all the way around my yellow, the different colors. So see what it looks like now? I've gone all the way around. Okay, and I've squished them all together. And then remember me saying that you would need some type of knife. And so um, caregivers and moms and dads, you may be the ones that uh, you would prefer to do this uh, because um, it takes a, a fairly sharp knife. I have found that uh, with these clays, um, you need to cut fairly thickly, but it is also a problem when you cut uh, with a dull knife or a plastic knife. It just kind of squishes the stuff down. So I'm gonna try this little bit sharper knife. So if you have a paring knife or a kitchen knife, it might work better. But the next thing you do is that you're going to go and cut a thickness. So I'm gonna cut it fairly thick. Take my time and look what I have. Isn't that pretty? So you can use that as a bead and that's called Mili Fiore, okay? So you can cut a bunch more. All the same size if you want, or you can change the sizes. See those, there's three beads there. I, I've got lots more but I'm just gonna show you that much for now. Okay, so that's one thing that you can make. And then I talked about you need something um, like a wire so that you can use these as actual beads and when it dries, you could actually thread some thread through them. 
So I am taking it so that I'm not going through uh, the center of the flower because it looks like a flower. I'm going through the sides and I'm pushing it through. Can you see it there? So it's threaded. Okay, and I'm gonna rub that through a couple of times, roll it around in a circle on both sides so that it's a big enough hole that you can get some thread or lacing through. Okay, so you can do that. That's one thing that you can do with your Play-Doh. There's many other things that you can do with your Play-Doh, but what I'm going to do with my leftovers of this, since I'm only making three little beads, is uh, I'm gonna put them all together and I'm gonna rub them in my hands. And then I'm going to flatten it out just with my hands. And if you have a little rolling pin, maybe you've got a little kit or maybe mom and dad will let you use their rolling pin, whatever flatten it out and you can do this with just uh, plain too but here's a little rolling pin I have and I'm just flattening it out look at the pretty colors now oh, they're all mixed together so you can either take that and make it into a snake or while we have it rolled out let's wait on the snake because we know how to do those anyway but I'll just show you um, some other things that you can do. And so if you have some cookie cutters, right, small ones, then you can cut out pieces and uh, use them to hang, uh, put a hole in them kind of thing. And I'm gonna try this other type of stamp. This is a rubber stamp. See, it's a butterfly. So I'm gonna push that in. Oh, and that just works so much better. Now, I don't know how whether you can see the impression or not of a butterfly. And then you can take that and cut it out if you want. Okay. I also have, um, this is metal. I'm not sure where I got this, but um, I think it came off of one of my picnic table hooks. And I thought it was a nice, nice picture, a nice impression that it could make. So what you can do is then take a piece of saran wrap. If you have material that um, probably will stick to your clay, then just take some saran wrap and wrap it tightly around the item that you want to, to use to impress. And then I'm, I'll just do this on the other side. You roll out your clay. Let me get a little bit bigger. It'll accept the shape. and then press into it. And the nice part is it doesn't stick to the saran wrap. And so then, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's really hard with the bright colored clay, you can see the impression of the butterfly. And you can cut that out or leave it as is and hang that up once it dries. Make sure you put a hole in it. Um, the other thing you can do is um, make all kinds of creatures. So, um, but I want to start with the colored clay, the Play-Doh, and how you can make actually a really neat bowl. So, we have different types, types of clay. We can take it and roll it into balls. So you can take all different colors and roll them into balls that are about that big. So you can compare yours, put yours right up to mine and see if you can get yours around that size. And we're going to make a, a container. Remember how I said you can get a plastic bowl? We'll get some saran wrap and put in the plastic bowl just so that it sticks in. And then you're gonna start by just working on the edges of the bowl so in there, and you're going to push on the ball that you made. Push down, and then take the next one and push right beside it. So they actually connect. 
and you keep going, make more and more and more until you've filled right up to the top. And then if you want, you can make some that sit along the top too. And then you can let it dry, and then it's a nice little bowl for you. And if you just made it out of uh, gray clay or white clay, you can paint it with your temper paints or whatever. But here's one that I made out of colored clay. And so you see how when you press on each of the little balls, they come out and they connect to each other. And so they make for a nice bowl. And then I did some along the top too. Okay, so that's an easy idea. All right, and you can do that with the Play-Doh and with the, um, the modeling clay. Um, you can also do that uh, with just regular clay if you have a way of getting that. You can do it with a salt dough too. Um, I'm just gonna use this piece over and over again as I mix it together. But um, there's all kinds of things that you can impress in the clay. And so um, think about that, what you can make. But we can also do animals. And now that I have all this squished up into uh, different colors, I wanna show you how to make a really cute snail. You know how we talked about making snakes? So let's make another snake. And he's gonna turn into a snail. So you can roll out a piece. I'm not gonna need that much, but it's not pretty how that's come out now with all those colors. You can just use one color if you want or the plain, the plain clay, however. I've got lots here. So to start with, all you need is a, a, a long piece, and that's fairly long, like that. And then you take one end and you start turning it towards you and pushing down just a little bit. And keep turning, keep turning, keep turning all the way to almost the end, but not quite. I'm gonna do this really quickly. You take your time with it. But can you see that? How far I've gone? I'll just hold it up closely to you, how far I've gone with it. And it's just like a spiral, because you've rolled it. And then you can push it up. And then you can make a little head with it. And if you want, you can squeeze little feelers or antennas with that. And you can even put a little piece because they do have these, these kind of, they, they, um, they look kind of slimy, their tails. They do have these little tails that move them along. So look at that. See how easy that was? Okay, so that's a snail. Now, from the snail, let's think about other animals and things that we can make. So I'm going to show you here, and it's just from taking and starting with balls of clay. And so look at this guy. Can you see him? He's an elephant. Can you see his? There he is from the side. And we started with just a big ball of clay for his body. Right? So here, we'll do this. Big ball of clay for his body. And then we did a smaller ball and put it against it. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you too, when you're um, adding a piece of clay to another piece of clay, uh, with the salt dole and um, with the natural modeling clay, it, it's kind of important to scratch up whatever is going to connect, to uh, scratch it up uh, with with the play-doh it um, it seems to stick together quite nicely but with the others um, it's kind of important and then you take a little dip just a little bit of water and where you've scratched them up put them together okay so there's the body and there's the head and then um, look at the eyes that, that are on this one. These are really cute. And so these are just little tiny balls of clay. Little tiny balls of clay. 
And then what they've done with the tiny balls of clay, they've stuck them on. So remember to rough them up if you're using the other clay, whatever you want to use. These are just ideas of all different things you can do. And your, your caregivers and moms and dads will probably have some wonderful ideas too. But then you need something, maybe you have a toothpick or something, and they just put a hole in it in each one to make it look like real eyes. Okay, so can you see that part? There's the holes, okay? And then they made a trunk. And how do you think they made the trunk for the elephant? I bet somebody said it. You can either pull out from the snout and start making a trunk, or you can make a snake and add it on and make it go up so it's like an elephant's trunk. However you want to make it, because you can attach it on. And then of course it's flattened. His nose part is flattened and he has a couple of holes there too so he can breathe properly and eat through that. You can see that or not. Uh, okay, and then he has huge ears, doesn't he? He has really big ears. Look at those ears. Okay, and he has tusks too, great big teeth that come down. So you can make the teeth just like snakes and then cut them so that they match. And then the big ears, you just take some of the clay, roll it in a ball, and then start with your fingers, flattening it out. The shape, and there's one right there. I'll try to put it on. They have really big ears. So there's my first ear. Take the same amount to make another ear. And put it together, squeeze it in. Remember, if you're using the other clays to rough up the surface, scratch it up a bit. Okay. Okay, so far there's two great big ears, this face, and then we have to make legs, right? So how would you do that now? Let's give him blue legs just so we can see. And they're chunky legs. So what I'm going to do to make chunky legs is I rolled it into a ball and then I'm squeezing it in my hands like this. So one way is like squeeze this way and squeeze the other way. So it almost forms a square. And then you can tap it down, tap it down, and then do another one like that. And actually you have to do four, right? Because he has four legs. So into a ball, squeeze like this, like this, tap it down. Try to get them the same height because they have really chunky legs and then I'm just going to put these on so at the front one and two okay so you see his two legs and you can even draw they sometimes they draw toenails on on uh, on their feet because they have big nails. You can do that too. You can put all different things on them however you want. Okay, so that's basics. That's how to do an elephant. Of course, you add the, the tail, which just is a little little um, tail that actually is a, isn't really curled. It comes down and has a bit of a tassel on it, so you can do that too. And that's just like a worm or a snake. So really easy to do. The other thing that you can do is you can make puppets. 
from your animals and just let them dry on the um, stick like this. And so um, let's just say I've got this and you could put him on here and then let him dry. Okay, and then he becomes a little puppet and then you can use them to tell a story and play a game with them, okay? Maybe you could go on an African safari with them. Make a lion. Think about different things that you can make. Here is a pig. You see him and all he is is again a round ball and then we made little tiny ears and then I cut into using just a, you can use a pen or a pencil and then we just cut his mouth in here and then above it we put a little ball of clay, a smaller ball of clay and then we poked two holes in it as we attached it and then in that um, upper part of that big ball of clay we, we pushed two eyes and you can see the ears are tiny okay pretty simple and you know how to make the body if you want to make a body this was made to put a little tea light in it okay a rabbit here's a bunny rabbit and this one's a little bit harder to see so I'll hold them up closer okay and you make the feet so that they actually sit up because he's sitting down and look at how big these ears are and you can even take the, the clay and make one ear flop down a little bit. Sometimes bunnies have that. But and there's his face. Uh, just show you there. Okay. Here's a turtle. And you know how I showed you how to make um, the balls of clay and make them into the bowl? Well, you can do that too to make a turtle or a toad and, and uh, like this. And just think of the shell and um, make the shell by putting different uh, colored clays together or just different balls of clay together into a shell shape. And then um, all you have to do is make a head to stick underneath and four legs and a tail. So you can try that too. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to show you? Oh, alrighty. I've got some examples here of some jewelry. Okay, and I want to make sure that I show you two. Here's a little hedgehog, and that's made out of white clay. He hasn't been painted yet, but can you see how he was made? He was made out of a big ball of clay, and then, and then he was squished a little bit, and then we just pulled his feet I just pulled his feet, four feet, because he has little feet. And then I pulled out a nose too. And then give, gave him little tiny ears because he has very small ears. And then did holes for eyes and pulled up his nose. Put a little bit of a ball on the nose. Isn't he cute? Okay. I'm going to open up this clay now, just to finish up. And to show you how kind of neat this is. This clay is a bit more wet, and um, I want to tell you that if you make the, the salt dough, play dough, that um, you can keep it for a long time if you put it in plastic. So wrap it in plastic or put it in a Ziploc bag or put it in a plastic container, and you keep it in the refrigerator, and I believe it says together, it lasts for about four weeks if you keep it in the refrigerator, okay? So that's, that's a great thing. So um, this is a different type of clay, and this is fun to work with too, and you can make um, pinch pots with this. So I'm just gonna show you, I just took a hunk off. And you get it into a nice ball. So there's my nice ball. I'm going to tap it on my hand, just the palm of my hand, or you can just gently tap it on the table. Don't tap too hard. We're just forming a bottom for your piece, okay? And we're gonna make what we call a pinch pot. So probably your moms and dads will know how to do this, but you take your thumb, 
and what your thumb is, your big finger, okay? And you push in, but don't push all the way. Push in, push in until you can feel pushing against here, but don't go all the way. So you still want it to be flat, okay? And you want to have a bottom in your pot, okay? So when you do that, then take your thumb and put it back in, and we're gonna take the index finger and the third finger. So the pointy finger and the finger beside it and the thumb in the center, and we're going to squeeze a little bit. You can see where I've squeezed there. See my squeezing? And then we're gonna turn one way and we're gonna go right beside that first squeeze and squeeze again. So your thumb is drawing across in the, in the bottom of the pot and your uh, pointy finger and your third finger beside it are coming towards your thumb. And you just keep doing that all the way around. Try to do it as evenly as possible. Keep working at it, keep working at it, keep working at it. Till you get a nice little bowl. And these are called pinch pots. And in pottery, we do this a lot. And sometimes we make more than one and we add two or three together to make a nice little serving dish. So um, this clay um, dries naturally. It's air dry clay. So um, you can add some water to it if you want. Um, if you're adding something to it, you can do that. Um, you can use a stamp. You can use some things like these are little wooden pieces that I bought from the dollar store. So you can place them and push them in there make little flowers on the outside and then I'll show you what they look like. They look very pretty once you're done. See the impression? Isn't that pretty? And you could put them all the way around. Um, you can uh, try different things like I've got some, you might want some lace. This is um, from a doily and so I'm just going to take it and squeeze that in and see what that will look like. You can also roll this in if you have a flat piece. You can roll impressions in with a, the doily or ribbon that has lace on it. Let's take it off and see what that looks like. Ooh, that's pretty, look at that. Okay, and you can take, say, remember how I talked about a fork? You can take a fork and you can scratch in it, make lines. Lines up and down if you want. There's a plaid pattern there, okay? Um, anything that you can find, maybe um, a leaf that has a lot of um, hard veins in it. I've got one here, let's see if it will work. Veins don't show as well, but you can see the outline of the leaf a bit, okay? Um, if you have some beads um, or maybe shells, I've got some shells here, I can put a shell in here. Get that to work. See what that looks like. You can do all different kinds of things. Okay, there's a nice shell. All right. Well, there's some ideas for you. Um, I want to show you um, also the Mili Fiori. Um, you can also use uh, Sculpey and um, Fimo clays, and you can bake them in your oven too. They're, they're much more expensive. And I was also going to just suggest to you, um, there is this type of clay out there too, which I have used, it's by Crayola, it's an air dry clay. It's quite expensive. It's um, it's not as good as this air dry clay that you can get at the Dollarama. So um, don't go spending a lot of money. Um, this stuff cracks and breaks and really doesn't turn out very well at all. Um, and you'll be disappointed if you're trying to make anything um, sufficient uh, that you want to keep. So I'm just going to show you these pretty little things. These were made from Fimo, 
and Sculpey, but these are little beads. And again, it's the Millie Fiore, all different types. I also made a flower from uh, the clay. And then I cut some of those Remember how I showed you how to make those? And then I put a piece of clay behind them and made them into a bigger flower. And then I made some little leaves on my own too. So there's lots of things that you can do with it. And um, here's a little brooch and I used a stained glass piece in the center. Okay, and then I like making flowers in different ways. So there's another brooch with flowers. But when your pieces are dry, then you can, you can thread them. When your beads are dry, you can thread them into a nice necklace. Okay? And um, think about all the other th kinds of things that you can make. Um, I showed you how to make flat flowers, but you can also make three-dimensional flowers, meaning flowers that look very, very real. There's a flower there. And um, so for the last little bit, I'm just going to show you how to do that. And you can either do it with your Play-Doh. I think I will do it with the Play-Doh just because it's more colorful so that you can see. Um, but you can also use your um, self-drying, air-drying clay. And so what you need is to um, roll out or just squeeze out some clay. And just rip off a piece. Doesn't really matter what it looks like, but then you're going to roll that into itself. And so I'll just show you. I rolled my piece, and you see how it gives a little bit of a fold there? Okay. Then I'm going to take another color just to make this look better for you. Maybe uh, the red would be better. And I'm going to flatten it out too, or roll it out, depending on what you have. And then I start, because this is going to be my center, so I start by placing my clay and starting to wrap it around just like that. And so there's a beginning of a petal, and I just wrapped it around, squeezed it in, you can put some pinches in it or whatever. I'm going to use another color just to keep it going so you can see. And if you want a little bit rougher edges, you can actually tear the pieces that you're going to put on. It's up to you. But I'm going to go beside that, so I'm going to overlap it. You see that? Overlap it. Squeeze it in and wrap it around, okay, and squeeze it. And as I'm doing that, you can see that I'm getting a nice big stem being formed, okay? And so I'll take one more color. Uh, I already have yellow, so I'm gonna just rip a piece of yellow off, make it thin, and I'm going to add that one in, overlapping again on one area See that? Overlapping. And there you go. There's a really easy flower to make. And you've got a stem already, so you can just make sure that you um, push that all together. The stem. And then we can make a leaf. So I saved the green, and you can flatten that out. You don't need a lot for the leaf, so I took away from that a little bit. Flatten it out. And then I just take my index finger, or my pointy finger, and I wrap that on my finger, just like that. And then I take it and pinch it at the bottom so that I have a nice leaf and I can stick the leaf on wherever I want on here. And look at that. Let me put it 
down a little bit farther. And there you go with a little leaf on it. Okay, you let that dry. Wonderful. Okay, there are lots of ideas there. Um, probably I've forgotten a few things, but um, you can press a lot of things into your clays and make impressions. You can use cookie cutters, you can use stamps, you can use stencils, and uh, with a stencil you can just trace into your clay to make an impression uh, from the stencil, or you can push the stencil down uh, fairly hard and it will make an impression too. So I hope that has helped you. And just a reminder, don't forget to help clean up and make sure that you put the pieces of clay that you're not using and you want to use another day back in their containers, either a, a plastic container or a Ziploc bag, and um, make sure that they are, they are put away safely and sealed well so that you can use them again another day. And I look forward to seeing you again another time at Muckus Corner. Bye.